Hi folks! In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to work the double dip stitch. It's often used as a ribbed pattern and has various names. I've seen it called constellate rib, heart rib, puff rib, although there are several different stitch patterns called puff rib. So it's a bit of a tricky one to search for or to know what to call this tutorial, but hopefully, if you're watching, you have found the stitch pattern tutorial you're looking for. The stitch is often put together in columns on a ribbed base, something like this. But it can also be used either in isolation to create a sort of detail on a stockinette or reverse stockinette background. And it can be used as single columns combined with other stitch patterns. I really like it with cables as I did for my crown shy beanie pattern, which I'm working on here. Here I've got columns of double dip stitch alternating with a nine stitch cable braid. And there are two purl stitches or columns in between each of those. And I really like how that looks. So this is a really fun stitch to add to your repertoire. One of my favorite things about it is that these sort of V's kind of look like really big knit stitches, so it's a fun way to play with scale in your knitted fabric. Something no one seems to be able to agree on is exactly what these shapes look like. Do you see little hearts, leaves, maybe stems of leaves? I've even seen them compared to little bums when turned upside down, which is one of those once you see it, you can't unsee it things. But whatever you think they look like, whatever you call this pattern, it's a fun pattern to work, and it creates a really gorgeous, thick, cushy fabric that's going to be lovely and warm. It's perfect for blankets, scarves, hats, super snuggly and dense. I'm going to show you how to work the double dip stitch on a rib base. And I've got alternating columns of two purl stitches and three knit stitches here. And I've just worked a cast on and then three sort of setup rows in that basic rib pattern. To end up with a two purl stitches at either end, you'll want to start with a multiple of five stitches plus two. So your repeat is purl two knit three, so that's five stitches, and then you need two more to add that symmetry with those two purl stitches on the end. And you want to work at least three setup rows, and I used a long tail cast on, which gives me these kind of loops along the bottom, and then the first row. If you're using a cast on that only gives you the kind of bottom loops, you want to make sure you have, you've worked at least four setup rows before working your double dip stitches. So you can add an extra row. What I want to be able to do is count down four rows, including the row that's currently on the needle. So one, two, three, four, without ending up in my cast on edge. I'm going to start with purl two. And then I'm going to take my yarn to the back ready to knit. But before I knit the next stitch, I'm going to create my dip stitch or my elongated stitch. And I do that by working into the fabric. So into my knitted fabric, I'm going to create a stitch. So I'm going to count down again. One, two, three, four, including the stitch that's on my left needle. I go into the middle of that stitch from front to back, stabbing straight through it, wrap the yarn, and then pull that loop through to the right side. And I'm going to pull up on my needle tip to add some extra length there. It's really important when you're working these dip stitches that you're, you have enough yarn in the stitch to kind of lay comfortably across the fabric up to the current row. You don't want to cause puckers when you're making this. And then I'm going to knit the next three stitches just as normal, taking care that when I knit them, I don't pull the yarn so tight that it starts coming out of that elongated stitch. And then we're going to create another dip stitch. And we're going to do that into the same stitch as we did before. And it helps to use your thumb or your index finger to hold the stitches on the right needle here. It's quite easy to pull the needle out of them completely into that same stitch, wrap the yarn again, pull through. Then I'm going to purl two, so yarn to the front, purl 
Pearl 2 as normal. And I usually knit English, but I know it can be a bit tricky to follow along with a tutorial that's not in your knitting style. So I'll show you how to do that continental as well. The process is the same. Second stitch in for my left needle tip, that center of that knit three column, and then count down. One, two, three, four. Stab it through this stitch. Grab a loop of yarn and pull it through to the right side. Again, pulling up on that right needle tip to add some extra length. Knit the next three stitches as you normally would. And then we're gonna create our second dip stitch again into the same stitch as before. Two dip stitches here. You can see really clearly that those are coming out of the same stitch. Yarn to the front. Pearl the next two stitches as you normally would. And then you're going to work another set of double dip stitches on this column and continue in that way to the end of the row. If you are finding it tricky to either pull that loop of yarn through from the wrong side or to kind of use your right needle tip without the stitches sliding off the end, it can be helpful to use a crochet hook. So I've got a hook here. I'm going to count down in the same way. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to go into this stitch here. Tension my yarn. And then use the hook to pull it through the right side. Place it on just the right needle tip. There's a little bit of several things to juggle there. Knit the next three. Then use the crochet hook once more to grab that through and place it on the right needle tip. It really doesn't matter how you pick up those dip stitches, how you create them. The result is the same whether you knit English or Continental or use a crochet hook to help you. Just going to continue working in pattern to the end of this row. At the end of the first pattern row, it should look something like this. So you can see I've got this little double V shape on each column of knits. Return and then the first wrong side row, you're going to knit the knit columns, which were your per columns on the right side. So I'm going to start with just To start with just knit two and then we're going to slip each of those elongated stitches so I'll have one at either end of this purl column so I'm going to bring the yarn to the front between the needles and then slip the next stitch purl wise purl three slip the next stitch and then take the yarn to the back to knit two you can now see how prominent these stitches are and when we created these dip stitches we added an extra stitch at each one but we don't want increases we don't want this pattern this fabric to keep growing and growing to counteract that on this row I'm going to work decreases that basically decrease the dip stitches onto the stitches next to them and take down our stitch count to what it originally was the first two stitches are just purl two and then I'm going to work a slip slip knit decrease or SSK. So I'm going to slip the next stitch knit wise. That should be my dip stitch. And then slip the next stitch knit wise. And then insert my left needle tip into them from left to right and knit those together. Knit one and then knit two together. And you can see that the dip stitches effectively become the top stitch of my decreases and the dip stitches are now laying smoothly over the top of one stitch of either side of that center stitch. Purl two. I'll show you those worked continental as well. So I'm going to slip my dip stitch knitwise, slip my next stitch knitwise, insert the left needle from left to right and then 
scoop the yarn, pull it through to knit those together. Knit one, and then knit two together. If you find it easier, you can also work the first decrease in each column as a slip one, knit one, pass slip stitch over. So slip the dip stitch knitwise, knit one, pass the slip stitch over. The result's identical, so just use whichever of those decreases feels more comfortable to you. Knit the center stitch, and then knit the next two together. Row four will get us ready to work our next dip stitch row, and that's just going to be working in our rib pattern. So I'm going to knit my knit stitches and purl the purls. Knit two, purl three, and repeat that sequence until there are two stitches left and knit the last two stitches. Continue by repeating those four rows. I'll show you again how to work the double dip stitch since it's a little bit confusing when you've already got these sort of dip stitches on the surface. It can be a little tricky to see where to put in your right needle. But it's going to be exactly the same as we did before. So counting down four, including the stitch on the left needle in the center column. So one stitch in from our first stitch, and then one, two, three, four. And you might have to kind of pull your dip stitches from your last dip stitch row apart a little bit to get into that stitch. So I'm going to insert my right needle here, the yarn, Bring that through, knit the next three, and then create another dip stitch, pull that through. And you can see now how those dip stitches sort of nestle against each other and really hide the underlying stockinette fabric, and it almost looks like you've got these giant knit stitches on the surface of your fabric. There are several popular patterns that use this technique, and you might see subtle variations, for example, in how many rows below the current row you pick up your dip stitch, but the actual method is the same. Just follow your pattern for how many rows down to do it, how far apart to maybe space your columns, whether you're working on a ribbed base or you're working double dip stitches as more of a surface detail on a stockinette fabric. You can just follow your pattern for how to do those specific things and adapt this tutorial to what you're making. And don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss my next knitting technique video. I'm Isolde, I'm a knitwear designer based in Edinburgh, Scotland, and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Zolda. Um, my website is zolda.com.